Amazingly, the Republican leading the House investigation into the Trump camp's possible links to Russia. House Intelligence Chairman Devin Nunes told reporters yesterday he had never heard of Stone or another major player in the Trump-Russia drama, former Trump foreign policy advisor Carter Page. You haven't heard of Carter Page and all these other people? So. I mean, there are about five names mentioned by the Democrats. I don't know these people. You've, you've not heard of Carter Page or Roger Stone? No. You've never I've read of Manafort. You've never read any stories about any of these people? I've heard lots of stories, but there was more names than that. Joining me now, Democratic Representative Eric Swalwell of California, member of the Democratic leadership, as well as the House Intelligence Committee, where Comey testified yesterday. First, can you just react to the chair of your committee saying he has never heard of Roger Stone? The evidence shows the contrary. The, the world knows who Roger Stone is. The world knows who Carter Page and Paul Manafort and Michael Flynn are. They are individuals, a part of this Trump orbit, who had deep personal, political, and financial ties to Russia. And now we are starting to learn that there may have been a convergence of those ties with Russia's interference campaign. Was the chair of your committee, I just want to be clear on this, was the chair of your committee, Devin Nunes, when he answered that question yesterday negatively, he had not heard of Roger Stone, was he lying? I, I don't know how he could not have heard of Roger Stone. We told the world yesterday who Roger Stone was, and over the last few months, we have put out evidence that Roger Stone knew that these attacks against the Democratic candidate was coming because he was intimating on Twitter that John Podesta was going to spend his time in the barrel. So uh, it's, it's contrary to what all of the evidence shows. Uh, I want to ask your reaction to uh, the move by the Secretary of State to skip uh, a NATO meeting and, and visit Russia instead. Um, Rex Tillerson will go to Russia, but skip the NATO meeting next month. Now, uh, State is saying this was a logistical scheduling issue. They're trying to uh, arrange it so he can go to a NATO meeting. The president may go as well. But do you think there are signals being sent by this administration to this day of a kind of almost public, if tacit, quid pro quo? Yes, Chris. And what we tried to show yesterday was, first, Russia is a foreign adversary. That's why having such deep ties to Russia is concerning. And these deep ties not only may have extended to their interference campaign, we are now seeing a dramatic change in U.S. policy. That ranges from the change in the Republican Party platform at the convention. That ranges... Jeff Sessions going from being anti-Russia to saying we should embrace Russia. And now our Secretary of State is skipping a meeting of foreign ministers with NATO to go and meet with Russia later on in the month. So I think the, the president should suspend any policy changes toward Russia until we get to the bottom of what happened during the election. On that note, there's been a call from uh, Chuck Schumer, the Senate Minority Leader, uh, for a suspension of the, the hearing process uh, for Neil Gorsuch uh, while the investigation is happening. Do you agree with that? I, I'm going to respect what the Senate is doing, and I, I believe that uh, we should suspend anything significant under this presidency right now with respect to foreign policy. I think, uh, I, I think Senator Schumer is correct that this is a Supreme Court vacancy that does not come up very often, and in light of this investigation, we should just put on the brakes. Well well, it seems to me the logic of, of, of what the senator from New York is saying is essentially a cloud of illegitimacy currently taints the presidency. The entire thing has to be put on pause. And if you thought that that were the case for Neil Gorsuch, I would, I would imagine you'd think the same thing for the entirety of the agenda. I mean, do you think the presence of this ongoing investigation looms so large that the president cannot conduct being president of the United States? Well, he certainly doesn't act like the president of the United States when he is tweeting uh, what is turned out to be uh, just falsities throughout the hearing yesterday. Again, I think it's really remarkable that he's not even doing the job of president. He's watching a hearing about lies he made about President Obama and then tweeting further lies. We need him to be a president. Uh, but right now, there are too many questions about his involvement, his team's involvement with Russia as this interference campaign went on that I think at the very least, Chris, we should suspend any changes in policy toward Russia. I think let's just put on the brakes with respect to the Supreme Court nomination, but that's the Senate's business, and I'm going to do what we have to do what? on the House Intelligence Committee. Finally, do you have confidence in Devin Nunes' ability to steer this investigation in any kind of impartial manner whatsoever? Right now, we have heard from what I think are the, the easy consensus witnesses, U.S. government officials. The harder ones, and the test will be when we want to hear from individuals like Roger Stone and Carter Page and Paul Manafort, and perhaps, uh, if the evidence takes us there, the president himself, and also the documents we want to review. This investigation would not be complete if we are not able to see the president's 
tax returns. And so that's going to be the test as to whether we are truly going to follow the evidence or not. So I'm going to uh, wait and see on that one. All right, Representative Eric Swalwell, thanks for your time tonight. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Jeremy